Hey guys, welcome back to the channel again. In today's tutorial, we are going to install Arch Linux with the Butterface file system and Snapper. We are going to create four sub volumes, configure Snapper, and also grab for snapshots. So let's get going. So we booted up now from SSH and we are ready to start the install. So the first thing we need to do is of course checking for the internet connection. So to do this we'll type in IP space A and hit enter. And because I have an internet cable here connected to my computer, I have an IP here ending with 25. You should have an IP as well if you have an internet cable, but if you have Wi-Fi, right now you can type in Wi-Fi dash menu. And when you hit enter, you'll see a list of networks. You can select yours, enter the password and you'll have an IP as well. But let me delete this command here and clean up the terminal. So before proceeding with the installation, let's make sure that our downloads are as fast as, as they can be. So to do this, we'll install a package called Reflector. And to do this, we'll type in first pacman-syyy to synchronize once the servers and hit enter. And now let's clean up the terminal. And let's type in pacman-s reflector and hit enter. Proceed with the installation by hitting enter. And there you go. Let me clean up the terminal again. And now we'll type in reflector and then dash C for the country. And then we enter the country where you are in. In my case, it's Switzerland. Then dash A, this is the age of the server since when the server was updated. In my case, I want to put six, which corresponds to six hours. And then dash dash sort, then rate, which is going to sort the servers by speed. And then dash dash save space etsy slash pacman dot d slash mirror list so we are saving basically this information into our mirror list and hit enter and there you go now let's type in one more time pacman dash s y y y to resynchronize the servers and we can clean up the terminal and we are ready to proceed the installation now the first thing is we need to synchronize the network time protocol so we'll type in time date ctl set dash ntp and the value is true and hit enter and there you go now let's clean up the terminal and let's go into partitioning the disk so let me type in lsplk and as you can see here we have a disk in my machine here called vda and it's 100 gigabytes so this is where we want to install arch linux so let's type in now fdisk the partitioning tool then slash dev slash vda the disk name and hit enter now, because this is a UFI system, I need to create a GPT label. So I'll type in G and hit enter. And the label is created. And let me clean up the terminal. Now, let's proceed by creating the first partition, which is going to be our EFI partition. So let's type in N for new and hit enter. Accept the partition number one as a default and hit enter. Also, let's accept the default for the first sector and hit enter here. And the last sector defines the size of the partition, so I want the EFI partition to be 200 megabytes, so I'll type in plus 200M and hit enter. Now let's tell to the system this is an EFI partition, so we'll type in T for type and hit enter. And selected partition is number one, so it's fine. And the partition type is the number one for the EFI system. If you don't know the partition type, you can type in the capital L and you'll see a list of it. Then you can choose the appropriate number. In this case, we'll type in 1 and hit enter, and the file system is changed to EFI system. Now, let's create the swap partition by typing in N for new and hit enter. Accept the partition number default 2 and hit enter. Also, the default for the first sector and hit enter here. And we'll make the swap partition 2 gigabytes, so we'll type in plus 2, capital G, and hit enter. And there you go. Now, let's type in T for type, and the default partition number 2 is fine, so we hit enter here. And we type here 19, which corresponds to the swap file system, and then we hit enter. Now let's create the last partition by typing in N for new and hit enter. And partition number 3 is fine, so I hit enter here. And first sector is also default, so we hit enter here. And the same goes for the last sector, as this partition takes the remainder of the disk, and let's hit enter. And there you go. Now let's write these changes to the disk, so we'll type in W and hit enter. And the partitioning is done. So let me clean up the terminal and type in lsbk. And now we have our three partitions there. VDA1, VDA2, and VDA3. 
So now let's proceed by formatting these partitions. Let's begin with VDA1, which is a EFI partition. So it has to be formatted with a FAT file system type. So let's type in MKFS for make file system, FAT, then we specify the FAT32 file system. So we'll type in dash capital F32, and then the partition path slash dev slash VDA1, and hit enter. Now let's make the swap in VDA2 by typing in MKSwap. And then the partition path slash dev slash VDA2 and hit enter. And let's also activate the swap here by typing in swap on and then the partition path slash dev slash VDA2 and hit enter. Now let's format VDA3 by typing in mkfs dot and then we specify the badrefs file system. So we'll type in btrfs and then the partition path slash dev slash VDA3 and hit enter. And the partitions are now formatted. Now let me clean up the terminal and let's proceed by mounting. The first partition we want to mount is VDA3, our installation directory. So we'll type in mount slash dev slash VDA3 space slash mount. Slash mount is our installation directory and we hit enter. Now it's time to create the sub volumes for the BadRFS file system. So we'll create the first sub volume corresponding to root by typing in btrfs su for sub volume cr for create and then the mount point which is slash mount our installation directory slash the add symbol which corresponds to the root sub volume and then hit enter now let's pull up the last command with the up arrow here and create also the home sub volume by typing in home at the end of the string and hit enter and again pulling up the same command with the up arrow we replace home with var and hit enter now let's pull up again the last command with the up arrow and create also the snapshots volume. So we replace var with snapshots and hit enter. And there you go. The sub volumes are now created. Now we need to unmount VDA3 by typing in umount slash mount. So we unmount basically our installation directory because we have to mount our sub volumes in there. So let's hit enter here. And first, let's mount our root subvolume by typing in mount dash o because we need to specify some options here. And the first option we want to specify is no a time, then a comma, and the second option is a compression option. So we'll type in compress equal, and we'll use the lzo compression type, then a comma. The next option is space underscore cache, then a comma again. And then we'll specify the sub volume. So we'll type in sub vol equal. And we've typed in the at mark we specified before for the root sub volume. So we'll type in at mark here. And then we specify the partition path. So slash dev slash VDA3 and its mount point in the system, which is slash mount. And then we hit enter. Now we need to create the directories for the other sub volumes in the mount directory. So let's do this by typing in mkdir dash p then slash mount, slash, then a curly brace, and we'll type in boot, the first directory, comma, the second directory is home, then a comma again, the third directory is var, comma again, and the last directory we want to create is dot snapshots. Then we close the curly brace here and hit enter. Now let's pull up the last two commands by hitting twice the up arrow, so we are pulling up here the mount command of the root sub volume. And because I don't want to retype the whole thing here, I'm just going to replace the sub volume and its mount point. So we want to now mount the home sub volume. So I'm going to add here at home, which is the home sub volume. And the mount point is slash mount slash home. One of the directories we created in the command before and hit enter. Now let's pull up again the same command with the up arrow and replace home with var and also replacing the mount point with var and hit enter and again let's pull up again the last command here and we'll replace now var with snapshots and also we'll replace the mount point from var to dot snapshots and hit enter now let's not forget also to mount our EFI partition into the boot directory we created before. So we'll type in mount slash dev slash VDA1 
space slash mount slash boot and hit enter. So the mounting is done. We can clean up the terminal and we can proceed by installing the base system. So we'll type in packstrap slash mount and then the packages are base, then Linux, then Linux dash firmware and then an editor will need anyway later. So in my case, nano and I'll install also a snapper right now. And then we just hit enter. So it's going to take a moment to download and install the packages and I'll be back when it's done. So there you go. The packages are installed and we can clean up the terminal. Now we need to generate the file system table. So we'll type in gen fs tab dash capital U for the UUID. This is how the file system table is going to be created by using the UUID of the partitions and then slash mount, then twice the major length symbol and then slash mount slash Etsy slash fs tab and hit enter. Now we can move into the installation and leave the installer by typing in arch dash root slash mount and hit enter. There you go. Let's clean up the terminal and we'll begin with the time zone. So we'll type in ln dash sf slash user slash share slash zone info slash Europe in my case and slash Zurich in my case you replace this according to your location and then slash Etsy slash local time and hit enter. Now let's synchronize the hardware clock to the system clock. So we'll type in HW clock space dash dash sys to HC system to hardware clock and hit enter. Now we need to edit the locale.gen file for our locale. So we'll type in nano slash Etsy slash locale.gen and hit enter. And we'll scroll down until we find the locale we are looking for. In my case, I'm looking for English US and I see it right here. And so we need to delete the string which has UTF-8. So we uncomment this line by deleting the hashtag here. And then we hit Control O and enter to save the file and Control X to exit the editor. And now we can generate the locale for the system by typing in locale-gen and hit enter. And our locales are now generated. Now we need to work also on the locale.com file. There are many ways on how we can do this, but I'll go on the editor way and I'll type in nano slash Etsy slash locale.conf and hit enter. Now we enter the string we selected before. So we'll type in lang for language equal and then the string en underscore us dot utf dash eight and then control o and enter to save the file and control x to exit the editor. Now we can define our host name. So to do this, we'll type in nano slash Etsy slash host name and hit enter. You can basically select the name for your machine here. In my case, I'll choose arch snap and then control O and enter to save the file and control X to exit the editor. And now we need to work on the hosts file. So we'll type in nano slash Etsy slash hosts and hit enter. Scroll down to the empty space and enter the IPv4 address, which is 127.0.0.1 tab localhost. Next line, the IPv6 address, which is colon colon one tab tab and then localhost again. And then in the last line, 127.0.1.1, then a tab and then our host name. So in my case is arch snap, then dot local domain then a tab again and again the host name arch snap in my case you replace this accordingly and then control o and enter to save the file and control x to exit the editor now let's give a password to the root user so we'll type in pass wd and hit enter enter the new password and retype it there you go let's clean up the terminal and now we can proceed by installing our grab bootloader and some other packages so let's type in pacman dash capital s the first package is grub. We have an extra package because this is a butterfs file system, which is grub dash butterfs. We'll see its functionality a little later. Then because it's a EFI system, we have also EFI boots MGR and some networking tools. So one is network manager. Then we have also network dash manager dash applet. We also want to install wireless tools and also WPA underscore supplicant and also dialog and OS dash prober and two fat file system tools. One is mTools 
and the other one is DOS FS tools and two development packages. One is base dash devil and the other one is Linux dash headers. And I'm going to install also reflector to have it available after the install. And when you're ready, you just hit enter. Accept the defaults by hitting enter and proceed with installation by hitting enter. So it's going to take a moment to download and install the packages and I'll be back when it's done. So the packages are installed. Let's clean up the terminal and proceed by installing grub. So we'll type in grub dash install. Then we define the target. So dash dash target. This is a EFI machine. So I'll type in x86 underscore 64 dash EFI. Then we specify the EFI directory. So we'll type in dash dash EFI dash directory equal. If you remember before, our EFI directory is slash boot. And the last parameter is the bootloader ID. So we'll type in dash dash bootloader dash ID equal grab all capital letters and hit enter. There you go. Now we need to generate the configuration file for grab. So we'll type in grab dash MK config dash O for the output and then slash boot slash grab slash grab dot cfg so the output of the configuration file goes into the grub dot cfg file in the grub directory and then we hit enter so we see here because we installed grub but refresh there are some new things here it detected a separate boot partition and because there are still no snaps on the system it says snapper was detected, but there was no configuration. So there are no snapshots found. GrabBudRFS is actually a tool that will be helpful for us to see the snapshots when we boot the machine. But we'll look at this a little bit later anyway. So let's proceed now with the installation. And we need to enable Network Manager so that we have internet when we boot up the machine. So we'll type in system CTL enable Network Manager with capital N and capital M and hit enter. Now let's also create a user for the system. So we'll type in user add dash M capital G, then wheel, and then the username you want. So in my case, my name and hit enter. So the system is creating a user with a home directory. That's the M label. And the capital G label is for the supplementary group, which is wheel. And we are going to configure the wheel group in a moment for the pseudo privileges. But first let's give a password to the user. So we'll type in pass WD and then the user. And hit enter, enter a new password, and retype it, and there you go. Now let's type in editor, equal nano, and then vice sudo, and hit enter. Let's scroll down until we find the wheel group we talked about before. And there are two of these, and we need to uncomment the first one, which has the line all equal all all. So we delete the hashtag here, and then we save the file with control O and enter, and we exit the editor with control X. And now the user has pseudo privileges. So now it's time to return to the installer. Let's type in exit and hit enter. And let's unmount all the partitions by typing in u mount dash a. And now we can reboot the system. So we'll type in reboot. And I'll move back here to my main machine. And I can go full screen now here. And now we have grab here, so the installation was successful. So we just entered the install here. There you go. So I log in now again with root because there are still some tasks to perform and I don't want to use sudo the whole time. So I'll type in root here and then the root password. And there you go. Let me clean up the terminal. Now, the first thing we need to do is to check if we have an internet connection. So to do this, we'll type in IP space A. And again, because I have an internet cable, I have already an IP here. But if you have Wi-Fi right now, you can type in NMTUI and hit enter. Then you go down to activate a connection and hit enter. And you'll see a list of networks. You can select yours, enter the password, and you'll have an IP as well. So I'll exit the program here. And I clean up the terminal. So let's proceed by installing the graphic drivers, the display server, display manager, and the desktop environment. For this tutorial, I'm taking GNOME. So let's go ahead and install first the graphic drivers by typing in pacman-s. In my case is xf86-video-qxl. I'll give you the packages for Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA in a second. And I proceed with the installation here by hitting enter. There you go. So if you have an Intel card here, you can replace QXL with Intel. If you have an AMD card, you can replace your Intel with AMD GPU. 
And if you have an NVIDIA card, you can replace the whole thing here with NVIDIA and also NVIDIA dash utils. Then once you install it, you will have your drivers there. So let me clean up here. And the next step is to install the display server, Xorg. So we'll type in pacman dash capital S and then Xorg and hit enter. Accept the defaults by hitting enter and accept the installation here by hitting enter. So it's going to take a moment here to download and install the packages. It shouldn't take too long. There you go. So let's clean up the terminal. Next, let's install the display server, GDM. So we'll type in pacman dash s gdm and hit enter proceed with installation by hitting enter it's going to take a second to download and install there you go let's clean up the terminal now we need to enable gdm so that it boots up when we start the machine so we'll type in system ctl enable gdm and hit enter and let me clean up the terminal so now it's time to install the desktop environment so let's do this by typing in pacman dash s and then I want to install GNOME and also GNOME-extra for some extra packages and also Firefox and also xtg-utils, which I'll need later. And then I just hit enter. Accept the defaults here one more time. Again, accept the defaults one more time, one more time and proceed with installation by hitting enter. So it's going to take a moment to download and install the packages and I'll be back when it's done. So the packages are installed and let's clean up the terminal. And I'll go back now to my other terminal. So I'll type in IP space A and I'll check my IP here. So I go back to the other terminal. Let me clean this up and type in SSH hermano at 192.168.122.26 and hit enter. I'll accept the fingerprint and enter my password. And there you go. Now let me change to the root user here by typing in su and a dash and enter my password. There you go. Now we need to configure Snapper. So the first thing we should do is to create a configuration file for Snapper. Creating the configuration will actually want to create the dot snapshots directory, which is already existing. So the creation of the configuration file will probably fail. We could have done this differently when we partitioned the machine by not creating the dot snapshot directory then, but then we would have later put it in the fs tab file, which is quite tedious. So let's first unmount the directory by typing in umount slash dot snapshots and hit enter. And now let's remove the directory by typing in rm dash rf slash dot snapshots and hit enter. All right, let's clean up the terminal. Now let's create the snapper configuration for the root by typing in snapper dash c for configuration then we enter the name of the configuration which is root in my case and then we'll type in create dash config space and then the mount point of our root user which is slash and then hit enter and the configuration is now created so we need to configure actually the configuration itself so to do this we'll type in nano slash etsy slash snapper slash configs slash root and hit enter and the first thing we need to do is to allow actually the user of the system to access this file otherwise just a root user will be able to see this snapshot so we'll scroll down here where it says allow users and in this case because i'm the only user in the system i'll type in my name here and that's the first thing i need to do and the second thing we need to do is to go down here in the list until we find the limits for the timeline cleanup, which we will activate later. So as you can see here, we can define limits for years, months, weeks, daily, and hourly. Then I want to change this. I don't want to have yearly snapshots, so I'll delete this and put it to zero. Same goes for months. I will do it for seven snapshots only. I will say for weekly snapshot, I will go for 10. And daily snapshot, I will go for eight. And for hourly snapshots, I'll go for Five. You can, of course, adjust this according to your needs. And then we hit Ctrl O and enter to save the file and Ctrl X to exit the editor. Now we need to change the permissions of the dot snapshots directory so that it's visible also to our user. So to do this, we'll type in chmod, then A for all, plus we give basically the read and execute permission slash dot snapshots and hit enter. 
There you go. Now we can start our snapshots timers. And the first one we want to start is the timeline timer. So we'll type in system CTL start snapper dash timeline dot timer and hit enter. Now let's pull up the last command with the up arrow and also enable it by replacing the start word here so that it starts up at boot and hit enter. And now let's pull up again the last command here and we'll replace timeline with cleanup, which is going to define the parameter we specified before in the root configuration. And then we hit enter and we pull up again the last command here and we replace enable with start so that we can start the system now and hit enter. Now, there is still one thing we need to start, and that is the grab padrefs service. So let's do this by typing in system ctl start grub dash padrefs dot path and hit enter. And then pull up again the last command with the up arrow and replace start with enable and hit enter. So what this will do it's when the system will take a snapshot or we take a snapshot manually, it will be directly added to the grub bootloader list. We'll see this in a second. So now let's exit here the root user and I'll exit also the shell here and I'll go back to the machine because we can now reboot and we'll go into GNOME. So here is the bootloader. Let's put up the machine and let's enter my password here. And here is the GNOME desktop. I'll configure it here very quickly by adjusting the resolution here and the scale. There you go. So we can close this up and let me change also the colors to make it a little bit less straining on the eyes here. And I'll select the dark team here, so it's a little bit easier to watch. And then let's pull up a terminal. And I'll go full screen and increase the font size. There you go. So in a few minutes, we will install the GUI for Snapper, but I wanted to show you just the basic commands. So to see the list of snapshots in the system, we'll type in Snapper. Then dash C, we need to specify which configuration. So root, in my case, this is the only one I have right now. And then list, and hit enter. So as you can see, we have no snaps right now. The zero is not a snap. This is our current system, as it says in the description. And let's clean up the terminal and let's make a manual snapshot by typing in snapper dash C for the configuration. Again, root and then create, then a dash C again, because I want this snapshot to be considered in the timeline. So I'll type in now timeline. Otherwise, I would have to delete this manually. And then dash dash description, as I want to give it a description. And I'll call this after install. And hit enter. There you go. Now clean up the terminal again. And let's pull up again the last two commands here for listing the snapshots and hit enter. And as you can see, now we have one snapshot here with the date, the user who created, the cleanup is a timeline and the description is after install. So let me close the terminal here and let's reboot the machine one more time by clicking restart here. And as you can see now, we have a new options here, which is Arch Linux snapshots. This is thanks to the grab padrefs package we installed during the installation. So if we click here, you can see this is the snapshot we created manually. It was created at 5.10 p.m. It's a snapshot number one, and the description is after install. So we can actually boot from this snapshot, and it will work fine. The only thing is booting from this snapshot is read-only, although there is a way also to make them writable. We'll look at this in a second. So let's go back now with the escape key and boot into the installation again. And I'll enter my password here. And I'll pull up again a terminal. And I go again full screen here and increase the font size. And I want to create another snapshot. So I'll type in snapper dash C, then root. Remember, this is the configuration name. Then create, then a dash C again. This is going to be again in the timeline. And then dash dash description. 
and I call this before GUI, which means this is a snapshot before we install the snapper GUI. And then I just hit enter. So if you see now the snapshot list, we'll type in snapper dash C root and then list and hit enter. We'll see we have now the second snap here called before GUI. So let's clean this up and let's minimize the terminal here and let's pull up our Firefox browser because we want to go and install the snapper GUI. So I'll search here for snapper GUI arch and that's the second link here. Then we right click the git clone URL and click copy link location and we can close this up and go back to our terminal here and we'll type in git clone and then we'll paste in the link with control shift v and hit enter and now we need to change the directory into the download we just created so we'll type in cd then a s and then tab for auto completion and hit enter now we can make the package by typing in make pkg dash si and then capital p with a tab key to auto complete and hit enter enter our sudo password and hit enter again and proceed with installation by hitting enter. And finish and install now by hitting enter again. And the GUI is installed. So let's clean up the terminal here. And let's close the window. And let's go here to activity and type in snapper GUI. And as you can see, it's there. So we can start it up. And we see our two snapshots here. The after install and the before GUI we did before. Now, because we installed this GUI, I want to create another snapshot right now. So I'll type the plus here. And the configuration is root. This is the only one I have. And I'll put the description here and I will put after GUI. And for the cleanup, I'll go also for the timeline here and hit OK. And now we have also the before GUI and the after GUI snapshots here. You can browse this snapshot. You can select one here, for example, and click open. And you can scroll through it and see what's in there. If we click here on the top left of the window, we have the properties of the snapper GUI. And this basically corresponds to the properties we changed before when we edited the configuration file for the root configuration. So here you can tell snapper, for example, how many snaps you want per hour, per day, per month, per year. That's exactly what we did before when we configured the file. So let me close this up. And let me close now the window here. And let's put up one more time the machine by clicking restart here. And let's go to Arch Linux snapshots and hit enter. And I want to go actually to the snapshot before we installed Snapper GUI. So I'll select this snapshot here and hit enter. And then I'll select my main image here, which is the second one for my Linux installation and hit enter. So we are basically booting into this snapshot here. Now we can enter the password. And we are back on the desktop. However, when we look now for Snapper GUI, you will see it's not anymore there. You can see Snapper GUI program is not anymore there because it was a program in a root subvolume. Notice that this is not a snapshot of the home subvolume. That's why the Snapper GUI folder we downloaded from the AUR is still there. But the Snapper GUI program is gone. Now let me pull up a terminal. And again, I go full screen and increase the font size. Let me switch to the root user here. So I'll type in su and a dash and hit enter and enter my password and type in ls. I have no directories in here. So let's say I want to create a directory. So I'll type in mkdir and I'll call this directory test and hit enter. You can see the problem here. We cannot create any directory because the snapshot is read only. And this is actually how it is by default. We can change these snapshots from read only to writable, and we'll look at this in a second. However, before we do this, I want to show you how actually you can restore snapshots by booting from the Arch ISO. So let me exit here and close the terminal. And I'll turn off here my machine and click power off because I need to reattach the ISO. So I go here to my information here and click the CD-ROM here and select my Arch ISO and choose volume and click apply. Now we can start the machine up and I'll start up here from the Arch ISO. It's going to take a moment to boot up. And there you go. So let me clean up the terminal. So let's type in LSPLK. If you remember, our installation directory is on VDA3. So we need to mount this first and we'll type in mount 
slash dev slash vda3 and then slash mount and hit enter. Now let's say that our root subvolume has a problem and it doesn't work anymore as we expect and we want to revert to another snapshot. So the first thing we need to do is to find out which snapshot we want to actually use. So to look through the snapshots, we type in nano slash mount slash at snapshots, then a dash, and then an asterisk, then a dash again, and then info.xml, and hit enter. So as you can see here on top, this is the first snapshot of the three we have. And if we scroll down here to the description, we see which snapshot that is. So this is the first snapshot that we did after the installation. So let's scroll through the next ones by hitting Alt and then the major than symbol. This is the next snapshot is the after GUI. So this is what we did after installing the GUI for Snapper. And again, hitting the same key, we go to the second snapshot, which is before the GUI. So before we install the Snapper GUI. So let's say we want to actually restore this snapshot to the root sub volume. So let's exit here the editor by hitting Ctrl X three times and Ctrl L to clean up. So since kernel 4.5, we can remove sub volumes like we remove directories. So I'll type in rm rf and then slash mount slash the at mark, which is our root sub volume, and hit enter. It might take a moment if you have a lot of files in there. There you go. And now let's restore the second snapshot we saw before. So we'll type in madrefs sub vol snapshot. And then slash mount slash at snapshots slash two, which is the number of the snapshot we saw before, then a slash again, and then snapshot, and then again our mount volume. So slash mount slash at mark, which if you remember is our root sub volume. And then we just hit enter. And there you go. Now the only thing we need to do is to reboot the machine. So I'll type in reboot and hit enter. And when we hit now Arch Linux, we are basically restoring from the snapshot number two. So we can hit enter here, enter my password. There you go. And if we look again at the snapper GUI, we'll see that it's not available. And let's pull up also the terminal. And again, I'll go full screen here and increase the font size and I'll switch to the root user and enter my password here and again type in ls we see we don't have any directory so I try again to create one now so I'll type in mkdir and I'll call it test again and as you can see now our directory was created because the snapshot is writable so let me exit the root user here and clean up the terminal now what if we want to make our snapshot writable so that we can boot from grub so let's have a look again at our snapshots. Let's type in snapper dash C root list and hit enter. And so we have our three snapshots there. So I want to now boot to the after GUI snapshot directly from grub. The problem is this snapshot is read only. So if we type in now bdrfs property list dash ts and then the root to the snapshot. So in this case is slash dot snapshots dash three, remember this is the number three, slash snapshot, and hit enter. You can see here we have a RO. This is a read-only snapshot. So to change the property to writable, we'll need to type in sudo padrefs property set dash ts, then slash dot snapshots, slash three, slash snapshot, then a space, and then we define RO, read only, it's false. And hit enter. Enter our pseudo password. And there you go. So now let's try to boot from the snapshot number three. Let me close the window here. And let's boot up the machine again. So I click restart. And I go to Arch Linux snapshot here. And select the number three, which is the one on top, and hit enter. Go down to the main Linux image here, and hit enter. Enter my password. And now we can check two things. First, Snapper GUI should be again there. Let's have a look. There you go. Here is the Snapper GUI, fully functional. 
And let's pull up again a terminal. And again, I'll go full screen here and increase the font size and type in su and dash to go to the root user and type in ls. And now let's try to make a directory. So I'll type in mkdir test and hit enter. And as you can see, the file system is writable. So we boot it up directly from the snapshot, basically. So let me remove here the test directory and exit and close up the terminal. So the last thing we can look at is our boot partition. Our boot partition is formatted with a FAT file system type, and this is not to be included in the ButterFS snapshots. So to include the boot partition as a backup when there is a kernel update, we need to create a small hook. And let's do this by pulling up the terminal. And again, I'll go full screen and increase the font size. And let's create the hook file first by typing in sudo nano slash user slash share slash lib alpm slash hooks slash and we'll call the hook 50 boot backup dot hook. This is took from the arch wiki, by the way, you will find the info in the video description below and then we hit enter. Enter our pseudo password. And I already prepared the text for this. Again, you can find it on the video description. We basically enter this text here, so I'll just copy it up and paste it in here. So what this basically does is create a backup of our boot directory into the root subvolume snapshot when there is a kernel update. So this is all we need to do here. So we'll type in Control O and enter to save the file in Control X to exit the editor. And now we are covered up. If you have problems with Grub and you cannot boot into your machine, then we need to boot up from Arch ISO and reinstall Grub from there. And there is a video about this. You can find the link in the card in the upper right corner. So let me close this window here and also the file editor. And this is it about installing Arch Linux with the ButterFS file system and Snapper. So this is how you can install Arch Linux with Snapper. Snapshots are a very powerful tool to restore your system as you've seen in the video. And it's also very flexible. So I hope you liked the video guys. If you did, please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs really helps us out guys. And if you want to support the channel, please visit our Patreon website. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.